you concentrating on verse 4 and verse 6 and I'm taking from this scripture I want to talk with us this afternoon about being in the hand of the potter being in the hand of the potter hope I'm not breaking any copyright rules or anything I don't know how this thing works but recently one of my students sent me the lyrics of a song it's called the hurt and the healer by mercy me never heard of it was brand new to me too the song opens up says why that's how it starts why the question that is never far away but healing does not come from the explained Jesus please don't let this go in vain you are all I have you are all that remains but the part of the song that grabs my spirit he said so here I am what's left of me where glory meets my suffering I'm alive even though a part of me has died you take my heart and breathe it back to life I've fallen into your arms open wide when the hurt and the healer collide when the potter and my brokenness collide listen to the honesty of the song here I am what's left of me life has been so wicked to me I can't even call myself whole anymore he said here I am after the storm, after the wind, after the train wreck, after everything collapsed, after the roof caved in, here I am. What's left of me? Where your glory meets my suffering. I am alive. Even though a part of me has died. You will take my heart and breathe it back to life when the hurt and the healer. We're asking God for a divine collision in this house today. Every broken vessel needs to have a confrontation, a collision, not just a brush, not just a passing, a collision where you, you lock up together. We are asking God today by his spirit for there to be a divine collision in this house because we want to leave whole. From the dawn of creation, when God decided to make man, he did not do anything halfway. Almighty God made perfect man. Even before he made man, he made a perfect dwelling. He puts everything in place he think we would need. Everything. And then he made man. And he went as far to look at Adam. And he said, look, I'm going to give you dominion. And everything I have made, now you are in charge. Now go ahead and name your territory. And every creature that came, every name Adam gave it, God did not change it, he accepted it. And when God looked at the animal kingdom, there was unity and harmony and everybody had somebody to talk with and fear it and he looked at Adam and he said the thing not quite finished he said the animal kingdom is all right but there is nobody to hang out with Adam he said it is not good for the fellow to be alone since everybody else happy let me just hook him up and the Lord laid him out to sleep took a rib out of him and when he took the rib out of him he created a woman and when Adam woke up he saw his cute girl he now had somebody to associate with but can I tell you that the enemy does not like anything that is good and I tell people everywhere I go don't get me into a theological debate as to how sin could originate in a perfect heaven. It is one of the things I plan to ask when I get there. I have no biblical clarity to give you for that. But the Bible said 
that the enemy rose up. Lucifer rose up in rebellion against God. And he liked how God was running the thing. And he said, I'm going to exalt my throne above yours. And Almighty God kicked him out of heaven and said, There is one king in this kingdom. There will be no competition. And from the enemy lost his position. He's on a, he's on a permanent quest to get back at God. But since he can't fight God, The only way to hurt the heart of God is to destroy his prized possession. Humanity that he has made. And from day one, the enemy is on a rampage to shut us down and to take us and remove us. Do you think any young man when he was born looked in the mirror? And so by the time I'm 16, I want to murder somebody and, and, and go on death row. You think any young girl look in the mirror and said, My God, but I can't wait to finish high school so I can go walk the streets. No, no, no. It is sin that we are born with. It's the inheritance of sin. Every one of us that came into this world, we came in as we have been saying all week, with destiny and purpose over us. Every one of us had a role to play. Our lives were planned out in the heart of God. But because we are in this constant battle, we are in this struggle, there is a war going on between good and evil, heaven and hell. And the only way the enemy can get a foothold is when he can mess us up. God by his own wisdom. Abraham minding his own business, you know. You look at God. He said to Abraham, I want you to leave everything you know. Come follow me. I am going to make you a father of many nations. And in you, everybody in the world. After you, everybody that born shall be blessed. Did I tell you that when he said that to Abraham, Abraham was 75 years old. With a 65 year old barren wife. Yet God said, and we sit down and think there's anything that God can fix. God picked up a 75-year-old heathen with a 65-year-old barren wife and said, come after me. I am getting ready to put something in place. God refused to leave us at the mercy of our destruction. He said, I'm going to put something in place. And he did not just tell us in the river in the garden. He looked at the serpent. And, he said, and, and that is where you see we learn to be pretentious. When they fell in and Adam realized. And we're not talking about the whole thing. Where we go, man, how could Adam mess up? Listen to the man's version. The man said it was a love thing. That Adam loved the girl so much. That even though he knew he was going to die. He was prepared to die for love. So that's why he ate the fruit. Didn't want the girl to go down alone. Yet when God showed up in the garden, said, Adam, what have you done? He says, the woman. <laughs> he says, now me, is that woman you gave me? In other words, God is your fault. If you did not give me this woman, this would happen. Because you told me not to touch the tree. And I didn't touch it till you gave me the girl. And the girl got touched the tree. And now she gave me to eat. And you know the girl cute. I couldn't resist. And I eat the thing. And now the two of us in trouble. He says, I don't blame. Woman, what have you done? It's not me. It's the serpent. If you didn't make him, this would happen. It's a long time. We have learned how to be pretentious. And to cover our brokenness. And not take responsibility. Not realizing that God wants us to identify ourselves. Who are you? My name is Jacob. I am the supplanter. I am the trickster. Yes, it's me. And I need your help. We have to stop covering brokenness. When you cover it, it does not work. It's a little girl. No, you won't believe it, but it's a little girl. I was a rambunctious tomboy. It was a big old tree to climb, that's what I want to do. If I could jump out without breaking my bone, I had to try it. One day we tied a swing upon a big tree below the house. I had no clue what we were thinking. We put a piece of zinc 
on the road to be the seed to sit them. And Lord, we were singing, touching trees. Anybody come from? I know most of you grow up in a nice little swing in the backyard where it's all. No, 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 we have this swing on the tree. And you swing out far enough to touch the other tree with your foot. And you come back in and you just feel like you're getting ready to fly. And it was my sister's turn, and boy, was she singing. And she came in to go back out, and I was standing too close. And the edge of the sink come oh, mm. Not gonna gross you, mm. it was bad though. And because I knew on top of that, my grandmother could just kill us alive. The three of us decided to be doctors and nurses. So one go get the young cocoa. You know the young part of cocoa where we get chocolate from? From the tree? That was the antibiotic. We had seen her do it before, so we think we could do it. And so we go get the young thing from the tree and they scrape it and put it on the wound and got a big piece of pillowcase and tied up. And as far as I was concerned, I was fine. Didn't tell her. Covered it. He hid it. Oh, three days later, I couldn't walk. And when she ripped it off, she almost had a heart attack. She literally grabbed me and ran to go find the doctor. I ran the risk of losing my leg because I did not want to be chastised. I did not want to face the penalty for my action. I thought if I covered the wound, I'd get away with it. Not realizing I was setting myself up to lose my leg. And from the day, from the fall of man, we have been cultured and we have been programmed to keep up appearances, put the best outside, dying inside but not letting anybody know. Not evil God, but the sovereign God that made you, the God that ordained your life. He knows every ounce of brokenness you feel. He sees and he knows what is going down on the inside. It is not worth it. Tell him, it. look at him and tell him, here I am. This vessel is me. But we have been programmed how to pretend and to cover things. And as a result, instead of walking in what God has ordained for us and reaping the blessing of God and being confident, powerful worshippers. Can I tell you something? Some of the things you are so ashamed of. If you hear anybody say to you, it is your flaws that make you beautiful. According to the world, you know, beauty is size two. Not an ounce of fat. Light skin. And not a friend. And here all the way down here. Of course, you know, they didn't tell them if they can't grow it. You know, you know the rest of that. <laughs> Beauty is, is, is buckling. And especially women killing ourselves. Look at the TV, see somebody who's a size 200 that is 70 years old. And you're like, oh my God, they look like him. Sometimes show up on the door before the, the makeup team come in. And we kill ourselves trying to become, because the world tells us that this is what is accepted. We spoke on the weekend. God forbid that anybody know you have been through anything. Suddenly you are no longer Jennifer. You are the girl who was Van Dieter. You are the woman who had a child of the, 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 oh that's the girl who had the abortion. That's the one who was raped. So, oh that's the man that went to prison. Suddenly you are not an individual anymore. You are judged and you are identified based on what you have been through. Well no, we are rising up now you see. And we are telling the whole world, be quiet now. You have been talking about me, around me, and to me long enough. Keep quiet now. Let me tell you who I am. I was broken. I was destroyed. I was wounded. I was battered. Yes, that was me. But one day, one day, God Almighty, my heart.
something. I don't care who you are. You do not get to define me. You are entitled to your opinion. And this is where people tell me that, oh, you are so rude. I don't think it is you. You are entitled to your opinion, but I will take it for what it's worth. Depending on the source, absolutely nothing. No, 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 your opinion of me might be that I am less than. Do you think after God dig me out of a gutter, pick me up and clean me up, fix me up and give me a future? No good God in heaven. How silly would I be to let you know, come and tell me that I am nothing after the suffering God that called the world out of nothing and established the universe. The God that checked my pulse this morning and said, Jennifer, I am choosing to give you another day. The God that drove me my right mind. The God that kept the enemy at bay last night. The God that watched over me and gave me rest for my body. The God that even right now is already preparing my meal for after church. The God that goes ahead of me and takes care of everything. He calls me blessed. He calls me, Melissa, highly fearful. He calls me the apple of his eye. Somebody said God loves me so much, he can't keep his eyes off of me. Oh, I am the apple. Anywhere I move, he watches me. Before I call, he answers in my spirit joy in my soul give me good people around me friends when I need them people to pray me through before I came to church last night I got some news that was not so good from home no my husband is fine he was going to go. I got some news that was not good that just tore me up and I broke down in the room I kid you not and as I sat there go who she just scooted out the bathroom. I didn't even tell her the story. But she came out and she just grabbed me. And she's like, God, hold her. Undergird her. Come on, Jesus have mercy. Almighty God knew that in the midst of convention, I was going to get some bad news. And he knew I would not want to be alone. He knew I needed some undergirding. So he already fixed it up. So by the time the news came, and my heart got overwhelmed, Somebody came and grabbed me and said, come here. Let me lead you to the rock. That is higher than you are. I was come and I was under guard. I was able to come in last night and do what God wanted. And I am trusting him that when I get home tomorrow, I have the strength to handle what needs to be handled. The God who loves you like that. We got back to the room last night, my husband called because he was worried. So I said, I said, let me talk to him. She grabbed me phone. She got brother Lee. After we prayed for the girl in the room, she went to church and preached like a wild woman. The God who picked you. Lord Jesus, don't let this weekend finish and you don't get this. See yourself as God sees you. I have no interest in your past. If you choose to share it, that's fine. I don't care where you're coming from. When I look at you, I see God. I want to break out singing, look what God has done. Look what God made out of nothing. Look! I remember sharing with my young people years ago at Ebenezer, at the U.S. Ebenezer. And I told them, I said, don't let anybody pick you up like a piece of brown paper bag and throw you out. Tell them, don't throw me out yet. There's some treasure still in this trash. I know it looks like trash, but there's some treasure in there. You don't go throw me out. Judge yourself based on how God sees you. Not what anybody else think about you. From the get-go, God intended for your life to be full, for you to have peace. Can I tell you, you are more than your mother's daughter? 
You are more than your father's son. I don't care what they say passed down in genes and DNA and whatever. A long time ago, Mother Blend and I declared that all the nonsense from my mother and my grandmother, I declared it stopped with me. Can I keep it real? When you are raised a certain way, just like my figure said last night, nobody expects, given the family you're coming from. But one day I looked at a piece of broken mirror. I told you about the looking glass, right? Can you tell I'm from deep country? That's why I can't pretend you know Sister Sandy. I hope my mother everybody know I'm from deep country. I can try to be cute all I want, but by the time I start talking about my life, you know I'm coming from way down yonder. The first time my husband went where I came from, he said, how did you even get off the side of this mountain? Let alone look at corner. I said, it is God. I know my hand of areas, I'm not giving you trouble, but you know, oh, there's a perfect, any hand of areas? And you better own up where you come from, thank you, please. <laughs> We're the smallest parish, and we don't yonder, nobody even like us, because they say we're backward, and we're so little down there, we even come from Bush. <laughs> and the smallest parish was not just it, I lived down in a little hole. My brother said it was nothing but a tunnel and somebody dig off the top. That's how deep down in the country. The only thing past our house was a, was a burying plot. Nobody lived past us, we just made down yonder. But God, there is Jesus. You don't have running water, you don't have electricity, you don't have, a, you don't have dressing table, you don't have bureau, or whatever you want to call it. You have an 8 by 10 looking glass that you buy at the market in a wooden frame with a little hook on the top. And you drive a nail in the side of the house and you hang it up. And you and when the things fall and break, you can't buy a new one you because that's novelty. But the thing fell and broke, and when it broke, but my grandmother did she pick up the biggest piece and she put another piece of nail under the first nail and she cut it. So until a new looking glass can come. But one day after those who thought they were superior to us, and I mean family, after they trampled us in the mud and proclaimed death over my life, and I have no future not going anywhere. I walked around to the side of the house and I remember an old man in the hospital. I told my grandmother, I was went, I went to visit my granduncle, said to my grandmother, try with her because God have a plan for her life. I did not know what it meant, but I believed it. I was 12 years old and at 15 or 14, I walked to the side of the house and I looked at a little piece of mirror and I said, Jennifer, you are somebody. I did not know who I said, you are somebody. You are not going to be your mother. You are not going to be your grandmother. You are somebody. And I kept that in my spirit. And Almighty God brought me out. He said, yes, you somebody. And he's not half through with me yet. I will not let you. I will not allow you. You do not have the permission to mess with what God has done. Clear the atmosphere. Get up out of my space. Moses talking to me, sir, in Deuteronomy 28. He said, if you do what God wants, this and this and this, but the other thing, he said, the nations of the earth shall look at you and be afraid of you because they know you belong to God. So please. Some people are going to say to me, oh, we didn't come close to you, so one friend. Bible said, when I'm under divine protection, People will be afraid of you without you trouble. Yeah. Because they know you belong to God. And even though they're coming in to seduce you and to corrupt your spirit, they know they can't get a breakthrough. So they just back off and some talk bad about you. But that's fine. You know what I tell them? When you see me coming and walk the other way, if you expect me to be hurt, you have another guest coming. All you're doing is making way for royalty. Don't you see when royalty walking through town? Everybody clear the path. Clear the path, royal keep coming. Get out the way. Do you think I feel bad? I come in and sit down, and you're gonna get up because you can't stand me. Give me room, I put my pocket on there, so I'm not having you so. Make room, the princess. 
princess coming. I don't care if you have one dress. I don't care if you're the victim of beat up. I don't care if some man treats you bad and drop you. I don't care if you have been betrayed. Men, I don't care if some lady take everything you have and gone. And you just feel miserable. Tell them make room. As long as you have been to the potter's house. Behold a brand new vessel. You are a prince of God. You are a princess of God. Walk like royalty. Talk like royalty. Act like royalty. Let people know. Every now and again. The God that we serve. Hear what the Lord said to. Hear what the Lord said to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is looking, you know. Jeremiah said in verse 4, I watched him as he made a vessel. And the vessel was marred. And we have been beating this to death all weekend. For those of you who don't hear it yet, let's tell you again. The vessel was marred. Not when it was put down to dry while it was yet in the hand of the architect. The one that dreamt of the design to begin with, you were still in his hand when the marring took place. And he broke it down and Jeremiah said, as I looked, he didn't toss away the clay, but he made it, thank you please, he made it again, another vessel. Pay attention to the last part. As seemed good. You are God's original idea. You see, why you cannot let the wanting the affirmation of other people destroy you? As long as you live, not everybody is going to like you. Sorry to bust your bubble. I know you are nice and you are Miss Popular and Mr. Macho, but not everybody. It's, go it's going to like you. So stop trying. He made it as seemed good to the potter. People tell me, you sweat too much. You holler too much. You like to preach too much. You're too old fashioned. How you like to come up yourself so? Why you don't pluck your eyebrows? Why you don't? Why you don't get some tips? Well, guess what? A very long time ago, I told the ladies, I knew I have a forest in my forehead. And I'm fine with it. I am good to go. See like how you have them nice pretty do? Can't help myself like that at all. So is a hat. I brush it back with a comb stick in it. And I'm fine. If you want to think you look nicer than me, it's your business. If you think I'm going to be an image breaker and, you do, and I can't comb, it's your business. I had to go to a wedding made of honor. My girlfriend said to me, in the name of Jesus, you're not walking in the people's wedding with a comb clip in the back of your head. So she took me to the store and got me one of those bun things, the little thing you clip on that matches my hair, and put it on. I'm like, she's, I had to go to her house to have her put it on. I can't do it myself now. And, and can I tell you I am comfortable in my skin? Can I tell you I don't want to be you? As wonderful as you are, as beautiful as you look, can I tell you I love the Jennifer that God has created? Can I tell you I enjoy my pride? on the weekend. Let me tell you how God I told them all the little things and I must shave my sideburns and get rid <laughs> things that you don't even notice you know. Guess what God did Bishop? The Lord blessed me with a husband who just think my eyebrows are the most amazing thing he has ever seen. <laughs> Jennifer, we're gonna come for a sleepover and we're gonna tweak your eyebrows. Before I could answer, he said, Don't make me hurt you. <laughs> One of the side that they think is an embarrassment.
men for women's home. He just think they're the most wonderful thing. Yes. He got you so kicked. <laughs> If I decide not to go be somebody else, I'm doing all kind of I put my lip gloss on in the bedroom, I eat it off before I get outside the parking lot. I can't handle the Please, I know it sounds comical, but understand what I'm saying to you. Understand how unique you are. Understand you don't need anybody's affirmation to be the vessel that God has made you. Love who God has made and celebrate God. Everybody's like, can't you do something different? It doesn't matter what my hair does, it doesn't my hair. I come out in the car, I'm like, look at my hair. Oh yeah, I go home and brush it back. There you go. <laughs> I could brush my hair back every day of the year. He just think it's the most wonderful hairstyle. I am like, love is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Creative power of God. 
In Psalm he said, when I consider the heavens, it is the work of your fingers. In Isaiah 40 he said, behold, the Lord God will come with strong hands and his arms shall rule for him. When we talk about the hand of God, which is the hand of the potter, it is the hand that feeds his creatures. Psalm he said, thou openest thine hand and you satisfy the desire. When we talk about being in the hand of God, we are talking about being in a powerful, the mighty hand of God. And verse 6 brings us, O house of Israel, can I, I do with you as I've done with this potter? To be in the potter's hand is to be in a hand of love and forgiveness. God loves you in spite of your mess. Can I take my time and be a teacher this morning, not so much an evangelist? God loves you in spite of your mess. It does not matter who else doesn't love you. Look at the love God brings to the table. John 3 and verse 16. Listen to what the verse says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever God's love was motivated by the object of his affection had nothing to do with us you know. And listen to how we take in everybody. He gave his son without any guarantee that we would accept his gift. But love will make you do that. So even before we were seen, love for me in my rebellion, in my brokenness, in my hopelessness, in my wounded condition, in my place of wanting to end it all, God loved me enough. He said, I'm going to send my son. I am willing to let my son die so that you can live. You know what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is knowing that somebody did something wrong, but choosing to release them from accountability for the wrong that they have done. To forgive is to know that you hurt me. But nonetheless, I choose to let you off the hook. Never to mention it again. Forgiveness is to know that you were wronged. But to treat the individual that wronged you like it never happened. With a whole guilt over their head. Every time you see them, you don't bring it up. When they get a new friend, you don't say to them, watch her, we used to be friends, and I still talk to her now, but this is what she did to me. And the only reason why I talk, because of God. <laughs> <laughs> and before you know it, a relationship that could have been formed to be a benefit to the church is poisoned because we really have not forgiven. We hold it over their heads. Forgiveness means I've dealt with it. And I tell you how you hurt me. But I choose to release you. You're too heavy for me to carry. You are blocking up my flow. I want to function. Every time I want to praise God, your fears come before me. So I put you down now. I renounce you for my spirit. I declare that it is over. I am choosing to let you go. I am not holding it against you. Run on so I can live. That is what is in the hand of the potter. He look at us born in sin, shaped in iniquity, messed up like we don't know. He said, but if you accept my gift, I take your sin and I throw it in the sea of forgetfulness, never to mention it again. And you now stand justified. It's a legal term. You're guilty, but you are pardoned and you cannot be tried for it again. So those of you that like to keep bogus records, we fire you today. We nullify your unauthorized position. Leave God's vessels alone. If you see me talking to somebody, don't come tell me they're a mess. I don't want to hear it. Because all you're doing is trying to stop me not to discover yours. When you're in the hand of the potter, moving right along. When you're in the hand of the potter, it not only is it a place of love and forgiveness, it is a place of mercy and grace. 
And let me borrow somebody's definition. They say mercy is not getting what you deserve. You deserve judgment for your actions. But mercy rewrote it. What's that song? I should have died. But mercy might pass down. But mercy rewrote my life. Mercy is us not getting what we deserve. And grace, I love it, is getting what we do not deserve. We haven't earned it. We can't pay for it. But every morning you get up, in spite of where you're coming from with your marriage, you step off your bed just like Bishop Gigi into nothing but new mercies. Every day you get up, rain don't only fall on the nice people property, but when you look over there, rain falling over there, and you're like, glory to God, rain falling over here as well. Your children still get to go to school. They ride the same bus, they go to the university. Ah, oh, your life is blessed. Your husband get a job, you can't drive cars. Oh, mercy and grace. What you deserve for sin is death. Mercy gave us life. And the things that we do not deserve from God. Because we are so afraid. Almighty God gives it to us. Anyhow. Not only is it a place of mercy and grace. It is a place of reconciliation. Can you give me back verse number 6? And we're going to wrap this thing up. Verse number 6. He said you are marred. For those of you who are not here, we talked about marred all weekend. It is to spoil. Marring detracts from the beauty that God intended for you to portray. The storms of life break. You remember Hannah? No, 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 not Hannah. Naomi. Naomi heading back to Jerusalem after 10 years. And her friends, is that Naomi? She said, don't call me Naomi. Naomi means sweetness. It means fragrance. She said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Call me bitter. Because I went on full. And I'm coming back empty. God has dealt bitterly with me. I don't deserve a beautiful name. Can I tell you today? We give you the name that God gives you. We call you blessed. We call you precious. We call you redeemed. We call you restored. We call you choice vessel. We call you princess. We call you woman and man of purpose. We call you strong. We call you dignified. We call you elegant. We call you graceful. We call you beautiful. We call you handsome. We call you chosen. We call you blessed. We call you glorious. We call you wonderful. We call you highly favored. We give you the name that God gives you. Nobody will call you Mara. Ah. Ah. It is a place to mar is to disfigure, to shut you down, rob you of your ability to, to laugh. I don't know what I would do, Sister Sarah, if I couldn't laugh. It robs you of your ability to enjoy life. He said, All oh, house of Israel. Oh, Ebenezer and visitors and you stream. Yes. With your brokenness, your disfiguration, with everything that's broken your spirit, cannot the potter, God, who holds the universe together, can he not make you over? Because as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand. To reconcile is to bring back peace and harmony between two entities. And he said, I will reconcile and bring you back home to me. After all, you are under covenant. I have ordained for you to have a full life. Today you are in the hand of the potter. Why not submit to his will and let him make you over? Stand in his presence this afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Glory to God. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, make me over. Anything that sin has done to you. When I gave my life to the Lord, I was 15 years old. I know another thing is wrong with me. When I gave my life to the Lord, I was 15 years old. I hadn't done much of anything. I said everywhere I go, I have two choices. Obey my grandmother or die. There was no middle ground. So I choose to live. So I didn't have a chance to go do any crazy stuff. But when God saved me, he had to save me from me. Fifteen. Bound tightly to a ball of anger the whole world. Just ready for a fight at the drop of a hat. Can't win you. But had enough anger to start it. I will carry an argument for two weeks if you let me. Somebody look at my grandmother for me. I'm like, Mama, let me go answer them. She's like, you're a child. This is big people things. Keep out of it. And Lord, I got hot. Because I just know in two seconds, me and my little mouth just cook. <laughs> Level you like, like a bulldozer in a second. But that was my defense mechanism. For the frustrated, frightened, confused child on the inside. How come other people wearing shoes and I walk in a hot tower every day? How come other people don't get clothes and I'm borrowing clothes? How come people sleeping in bed and my grandmother collecting clothes from around the neighborhood to make up bed for us to sleep on? How come? How come? How come I can go to school and all my little friends can go to canteen to get lunch? I have to go home to go eat mango and drink water. How come other people can get lotion on their feet and she have been cooking oil on mine? How come? How come people around us hate us? How come family beating us up? How come nobody want to want to help us come out of the poverty? How come? How come? How come? There was an angry, a time bomb waiting to go off. But oh God, I walked into a church of fifty, and somebody preached Jesus, and they told me, Father, I do I will understand it. They tell me, even if I understand everything. But come to Jesus, Jesus loves you. And I walk to an altar and I tell him I don't even know what I'm doing. But they tell me, come here I am. And Lord God, he hasn't saved me yet. It's been all of 35 years. Yes, I'm 50, don't count your fingers. It's been all of 35 years. And I stand today to declare that there's a potter in this house. I don't care what you bring to the table. He can fix it and make it over. If you think I'm joking, look at me. Go down to Florida, go to Christian community. Look at my brother in the pulpit. He's not but a Mr. GQ. Whatever that means. <laughs> <coughs> the day we got baptized, the fellow had one little crumpling pants. Anybody remember crumpling? Yes. They tried to burn it in melted on blazing. <laughs> And that afternoon, my grandmother walked following the sun for the pants to dry because he had no more. So we could go back to church. And it couldn't dry, so he couldn't go. So the other day, I was at this church. And I sat in the congregation looking at him up there, singing and leading worship. And I just sit on there bawling like a fool. My mind went back. To when we should have died and not left the cotton. When we should have given ourselves. A woman told him one day, he said, you're going to go to prison and you're going to die there. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't care where life dropped. I don't care who bruised you or what bruised you. I don't care what has been spoken over your life. We cancel death in this house today. We reverse every diabolical curse that family or hell put on you. Today we deliver you by the power of the Holy Ghost from everything your circumstances place 
Jesus in your life. Today we tell you without question that as broken as you are, you are in the hands of the potter. And today he wants to make a new vessel. He wants to make a new vessel out of you. I don't care what you brought in here today. There's a potter in the house. Come, Sister Marsha. There's a potter in the house. And he wants to make you over. Bishop, I'm not ashamed about my life here. I don't know where I'm coming from. I don't care who wants to look at it funny. Because my life is a living testimony to the ability of the potter to make something out of nothing. And today as we stand in this house. Hallelujah. You came in and you are not saved. We call you today to meet the potter. Those of you who came because your families invited you. Those of you who are just broken and frustrated. Those of you who just feel that there is no hope you can't get out of this. Can you try the potter today? Before you give up on life, try him. said if you are in this house today if you are in this house and you are not saved can we just see you raise your hand no there's no pretense there's no joke if you do not know the Lord as your Savior God bless you as you raise your hand you put it down anybody else you do not know the Lord you are not yet born again God bless you as you raise them you put them down we come back to you anybody else anywhere in this house there is a potter in this house Hallelujah. there is purpose in your life and whatever it is or wherever it comes from, we declare today that your season of brokenness is over. We invite you today to a potter. O house of Israel, can I not do with you? Those of you who raise your hand, could you meet us here, please? We're not trying to put you on the spot. We all stood. We'd love to pray with you. Please come. Come, precious. Come, come. Everyone, come, come. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord bless you. Anybody else for this altar today? Anybody else? If you do not know the Lord as your Savior, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else, wherever you are in this house, whatever broke you, whatever scarred you, whatever bruised you, Wherever you are in this house, anywhere you are, we have room. Go ahead and stretch out. We have room. We have room. Now, we I am my altar workers. You know, this is where I get crazy. This is where I get good, good crazy. I need somebody standing with me. Come here, stand with this little lady for me, please. Ah, uh, I need a, I need a. Thank you, sir. Come, Pastor. Thank you. This right here is what it's all about. This right here is what it's all about. It's not entertainment. Anybody else, you do not yet know the Lord. As you stand with them, you minister. Let God tell you what to see. You're standing with a broken person who has responded to the word of God. Do you know what these lives are saying? Yes, I want a potter. Yes. I come for hope. Yes, I want to be made over. I am tired of being defined by people around me and by my circumstances. I am tired of not liking what I see when I look in the mirror. I want to be the person God has ordained me to be. So as these lives stand on the altar, as these lives stand before God, I want those of you who are ministering to them Remember what it felt like when you got rescued and speak life. Help them to find life today. Can we now speak to the church? Understand this. God has raised up the church, this modern day nation of Israel, to be his life and his light in this society. We are meant to show the world Jesus Christ, but we have allowed the things of the world to creep in and mar us and mess with us. Some of us in our own personal lives, our own personal struggles have provided and proved to be blockages, rocks in the path of our stream. 
But today in the name of Jesus, the call of God is without repentance. God still expects the church to worship. He still expects you to fulfill purpose. And if you are in here, you are not here from Thursday down to last night. And you are a Christian, but you are a marred vessel. I invite you now to an altar as we get ready to pray. If you are a believer and you, you say, my vessel is marred. I've tried everything and I can't fix it. I'm coming to the potter today. And I'm asking him to fix it. As we lift up the song, something beautiful. We're coming back to that one. Something good. All my confusion. He understood. All I had to offer him. Was brokenness and strife. But he made. If he did it once before. He can do it again. So as these vessels are being ministered to. Let me now call the church. Those who are saved. And you are saying to God. My vessel needs some help. And I'm coming before you today. This is your time to move. As we are letting worship. Something beautiful.
who you went someplace, doesn't matter. You know what matters right now? Where you are. And today, you are in the hands of the potter. Every ounce of broken. Can I tell that in your spirit again? It does not matter. We're not applauding mistake and mess up. But the fact that you survived it and you are in this house today, you don't get to destroy yourself with false guilt. He sees your brokenness. He said, that's what I specialize in. So where you were before now doesn't matter. Right in this moment, at five minutes to two, the third of June, 2012, this is what matters. You are now in the hand of the master potter. And he wants to erase yesterday and give you brand new life. If you are in your seat, do not go home with your marring. Bring it to this altar today and let God fix it. Let God. We're getting ready to pray. We don't want to leave out anymore. If you're listening by you stream, kneel down in your kitchen, by your bed, in your living room, it does not matter. If last night did not kill you, take life now. It should have killed you. You should have been destroyed. And it did not take you out. That now doesn't matter. Where you are now, can you feel his hands of love and forgiveness? Telling you it doesn't matter, you hurt my heart. But I don't hold it against you. Can you hear his voice of mercy? Giving you what you are. Can you hear him? Give you? How many more vessels are left in him? But it doesn't matter how hard we fall. It doesn't matter how we crash. It does not matter.